Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are all in good health. Our opening hymn this morning is number 373 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Tree, Tree of Life, and our presider is Father Cecil Critch. death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with every morn. Still you rise with every morn. Seed that dies to rise in glory, may we see our die to rise anew. We remember truth once spoken, love passed on through act and word. Every person lost or broken wears the body of all In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone, again. Good morning, Father. And welcome. And today, our Mass, I'm going to offer our Mass today for the repose of the soul of Agnes Ebbs. And Agnes, uh, as provincial uh, uh, spiritual, core, I guess, director for the Catholic Women's League, I know Agnes from her work and leadership in the, in the Catholic Women's League in Newfoundland, and particularly at uh, St. Thomas of Villanova Parish in Manuals, where she was on the parish council as well. So uh, I want to express my condolences to her sister Rita, whom I know from the Catholic Women's League, as well as all of her family at this difficult time. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts to forgive us for the times we have failed to be merciful to be con consoling and comforting to others, we ask the Lord's forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us to, in sincerity of heart, to attain the holy things to come. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children.
because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably with him. Now his brothers went out to pasture their father's flock near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes the dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the darkness, but lay no hand on him that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty and there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judith said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some midnight traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver and they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 105, the Lord will make a new covenant with his people. The Lord will make a new covenant with his people. The Lord will among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. The Lord will make a new covenant with his people. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles 
miracles and the judgment he uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. The Lord will make a new covenant with his people. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever. The covenant that he made with Abraham to Israel, an everlasting covenant. The Lord will make a new covenant with his people. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant, that he might keep his statutes and observe his laws. The Lord will make a new covenant with his people. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God loved the world so much, he gave his only son that all who believe in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered the temple, and as he was teaching, the chief priests and the Pharisees came to him, and Jesus said to them, Listen to a parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenant seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, The heir, come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? The chief priests and the Pharisees said to Jesus, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. And Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and he will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds, because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. We often hear of sibling rivalry, uh, often brought on by jealousy. I guess Joseph's story is quite extreme, and 
the story of Joseph about his brothers, feeling that he was their father's favorite, his coat of many colors we all hear about became a symbol of that favoritism. In the language of today's gospel, Joseph was the stone rejected by the builders. Yet that rejected stone went on to become the cornerstone. The story continues. Joseph was eventually taken captive into Egypt where his talents resulted in having a very important position in the Egyptian government. And when famine struck the land of Israel, Jacob sent his sons to Egypt looking for food. And who was the minister for food when the brothers arrived? only their brother Joseph. The one who had been rejected became their savior. So the early church saw in the story of Joseph a symbol in the story of the story of Jesus. In today's gospel, Jesus clearly identifies with the son of the landowner who was killed by the tenants. He is the stone rejected by the builders. Yet beyond his rejection, his crucifixion, he became as risen Lord, the cornerstone of the church, built of living stone. The story of Joseph and Jesus reminds us that God can turn bad things like rejection and suffering into a good purpose. God is always working to bring good out of the mess that people can create. There may be times in our lives when we feel rejected and we feel hurt and upset and vulnerable, yet these painful experiences in life can contain the seeds of new beginnings and new life. The Lord can work powerfully through them for our ultimate good. If nothing else, we learn something from them and we grow through them and because of them. What seemed like an experience of death became the moment of new life and likewise we need to remain close to Jesus, the cornerstone, and not reject Jesus in our lives and in our church and in our world. For without a solid foundation, our faith cannot survive or withstand the trials that we face in life. Today we are being reminded too that God is always at work even in the darkest of situations in our church and in our world. In places of great darkness and death, the Lord is always working in life-giving, affirming ways, life-affirming ways, and that is true of our own personal lives and of the life of the church too and of the life of the human race. We can only look and see the ways people are reaching out during this virus pandemic. So our calling is always to trust in the Lord that He is there beside us, helping us to grow in love and grace, even when we are in darkness. May we recognize the many ways that the Lord is working through us and through others every day. Our prayers of intercession. For Holy Father, Pope Francis, who today, just minutes ago, landed in Baghdad. So it's a very, uh, we worry about him and uh, we pray for his safety during his four day uh, pastoral visit to Iraq. Something that he has dreamed about since the time of uh, the beginning of his papacy. For peace in Iraq and for the safety of our Pope during this uh, pastoral visit to Iraq, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today also for all of our global leaders that they may work to create peace, the peace of Christ, the peace of Christ that results in compassion and justice and peace in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those impacted by this virus pandemic, for the sick, for the isolated, and for the protection of all our health care workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick recommended to our prayers, those in our homes and hospitals, Long-term care facilities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died today, we pray especially today for Agnes Ebbs. We also pray today for the anniversary of Brother Matty Dwyer and Brother Jim Bates, and also for Bradley Cheeseman, whose funeral is today. For all those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers in the quiet of your hearts today, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God, our Heavenly Father, hear our prayers. We make them in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
learned to bear his cross, so to wear the crown he Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for good of all the Catholic Church. Let us pray as we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Agnes. We beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt to you Doubt your son to be a loving savior, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. and Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember your servant Agnes, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share that peace of Christ with one another. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. 
My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal salvation, we pray, O Lord, that we may set our course so well as to attain the redemption you promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father and of the and Son and of the, Son, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. A Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is number 371 in the Catholic Book of Worship, O Son of Justice, Fill Our Hearts. <laughs> 